The night was unusually silent in the vast stretches of the Nevada desert. The only sounds were the occasional howls of distant coyotes and the soft rustling of the wind sweeping across the sandy expanse. Jim Sanders, a seasoned rancher known for his solitude and rugged lifestyle, was about to call it a night when a strange pulsating light caught his eye through the kitchen window. Curiosity overcoming his initial hesitation, Jim grabbed his flashlight and ventured out into the cool night air. The light seemed to be coming from the far end of his property, near the old unused barn. As he approached, the ground beneath his feet trembled slightly, and the light grew more intense, illuminating the desert like a beacon. Reaching the source, Jim discovered it wasn't a vehicle or a piece of his farming equipment as he had first guessed. It was something otherworldly. A small pod, oval in shape and glowing with a soft blue light, lay nestled in a freshly made crater. The surface of the pod was smooth and cold to the touch, vibrating with an unidentifiable energy. With caution, Jim circled the pod, shining his flashlight over its seamless surface, looking for any markings or indications of its origin. Finding none, he stepped back as the pod began to hum, its vibrations increasing. The light intensified, and with a gentle hiss, a section of the pod slid open, revealing the interior. Inside, wrapped in what appeared to be a thin, shimmering blanket, was a small creature. Its skin was a pale blue, almost translucent under the flashlight's beam, with two curious large black eyes that blinked open and looked directly at Jim. The creature was no bigger than a human toddler, but its delicate pointed ears and slight glow that emanated from its body suggested its extraterrestrial origin. Jim, though initially taken aback, sensed no threat from the being. As if understanding his peaceful intentions, the creature reached out a small hand towards him. Overcoming his initial shock, Jim gently lifted the alien child from the pod, the creature's lightweight surprising him. Realizing the gravity of his discovery, Jim knew he needed help. He wrapped the child in a spare jacket and hurried back to his house to call the local authorities. Within hours, his quiet ranch was swarming with government vehicles and officials from various agencies, all eager to assess the situation. As scientists and government officials debated and discussed in hushed, urgent tones, Jim watched over the small alien, whom he'd temporarily named Kale after his late father. Despite the chaos, Kale seemed unperturbed, gazing at the stars above with a wistful expression. It was clear to Jim that this small being was far from home, lost and alone. That night, under the starlit Nevada sky, a silent bond formed between the human and the alien child, one that would challenge the very understanding of life beyond Earth and set the stage for an incredible journey that neither of them could have anticipated. Following the mysterious arrival of the alien child, Kale, Jim Sanders found himself part of a rapidly evolving situation that extended far beyond the quiet confines of his ranch. Within hours of his call, federal agents had cordoned off the area, and a specialized team from an undisclosed government agency arrived to take over. Kale, the small blue-skinned alien, now rested quietly in Jim's arms, seemingly oblivious to the flurry of activity around him. The agents were courteous but firm with Jim, as they explained the need to transfer Kale to a more secure location a secretive facility known only to a few within the highest echelons of the government. Designed for extraterrestrial encounters, the facility was equipped with advanced technologies and staffed by experts in various scientific fields, all prepared for an event like this, though none had truly expected it. Reluctantly, Jim handed Kale over to Dr. Lisa Hammond, the lead scientist, who assured him of the child's safety and the importance of their work. She recognized the bond that had already formed between the human and the alien child and promised Jim that he could remain involved as a liaison, a familiar face for Kale in the strange new world he was about to enter. The facility, located deep in the mountains of Colorado, was a fortress of science and security, hidden from public view. As they descended below ground level, the surroundings transitioned from military starkness to a more accommodating environment designed to make Kale feel as comfortable as possible. The central hub was a large dome-shaped room filled with plants and soft lighting, mimicking a natural environment. 
Dr. Hammond and her team introduced Kale to his new home, carefully observing his reactions. To everyone's relief, Kale appeared curious and unafraid, his large eyes scanning the room with interest. The team had prepared a variety of objects for him to interact with, including toys similar to those used by human children, but adapted based on the initial assessment of his physical and cognitive abilities. Over the following days, Kale began to demonstrate a rapid understanding of human language, first through recognition, then through basic communication. He mimicked sounds and eventually formed words. The team used a combination of verbal teaching and interactive technology to facilitate this learning, amazed at his quick adaptability. Dr. Hammond, while overseeing Kale's integration and learning, conducted discrete tests to better understand his physiology and abilities. Kale's body seemed to adapt to Earth's environment, but there were anomalies. His skin contained a bioluminescent quality, and he occasionally displayed what could only be described as telekinetic abilities, moving small objects without touching them. Amidst the scientific curiosity, Jim remained a constant presence, visiting Kale daily. Their bond continued to strengthen, providing Kale with a sense of stability. Jim's down to earth demeanor and patient teaching style helped Kale not only adapt to his surroundings, but also thrive. As weeks turned into months, Kale grew comfortable in his new environment, charming the facility staff with his quick wit and playful antics. But as Kale's understanding of his situation deepened, so did his questions about his origins, his people, and why he was left behind. Dr. Hammond knew these were questions that they must eventually answer, and the search for those answers would lead them into uncharted scientific and ethical territories. As Kale's understanding of Earth and human culture deepened, so did his memories of his own planet, Viridia. These recollections came in flashes, vivid images and sensations that he shared telepathically with Dr. Lisa Hammond and her team at the facility. The challenge was interpreting these memories accurately, as Kale's abilities allowed him to project images and emotions. But the detailed explanation was still beyond his linguistic skills. Dr. Hammond decided to bring in Dr. Ethan Morris, a cognitive scientist specialized in memory and communication, to help decode Kale's thoughts more effectively. Dr. Morris introduced a sophisticated neural imaging device that could visually map Kale's brain activity when he recalled memories of Viridia. This allowed the team to see a representation of Kale's thoughts, translating them into a series of images on a screen. The first session with this new technology was profoundly enlightening. The team, along with Jim, gathered around as Kale focused, his face scrunched in concentration. The screen flickered and then displayed images of a lush, vibrant world. Viridia was covered in towering forests with bioluminescent trees that lit up the night sky, rivers that shimmered with light and skies filled with bright, swirling colors, an aurora much more intense than Earth's. Kale's emotional response to the images was a mix of joy and sadness. Through the neural imager, he projected the sensation of a gentle, warm breeze and the sound of a symphony of what could be assumed are Viridian creatures. It was a world teeming with life and beauty, yet so far removed from his current reality. Dr. Hammond and her team were captivated by the beauty of Viridia, but also puzzled over the technology Kale had brought with him, which was beyond anything humans had developed. This included the pod he arrived in, which was composed of materials unknown to Earth, and a small device Kale had kept with him, a sort of holographic projector that occasionally activated, showing glimpses of Viridian landscapes and figures that looked like Kale. The implications of this technology were vast, suggesting a civilization that was not only advanced, but possibly capable of interstellar travel. This raised urgent questions. How did Kale end up so far from such a civilization? Was his arrival accidental or intentional? The answers were crucial not only for understanding Kale's needs and future, but also for preparing for potential future contact. Amidst these scientific pursuits, Jim's bond with Kale provided a grounding effect for the young alien. Kale's ability to share his memories and emotions became more refined over time, and he began to express a deep longing for his home. This homesickness was palpable, and Jim, recognizing the emotional toll it took on Kale, advocated for more personal care 
and less scientific experimentation. With Jim's encouragement, the facility staff worked to create an environment that mimicked Kale's homeworld more closely. They adjusted the lighting to emulate Viridia's bioluminescent glow and replicated the sounds of Viridian wildlife. These changes had a visibly positive impact on Kale, who became more lively and engaged. As Kale continued to adapt and thrive in his earthly surroundings, the bond he formed with the humans around him grew stronger. However, the mystery of his origins remained, deepening the commitment of Dr. Hammond and her team to uncover more about Viridia, not just for the sake of human knowledge, but for Kale's emotional and psychological well-being. They hoped that understanding his past would help pave the way for his future, whether on Earth or the distant world of Viridia. As Kale's abilities developed and his story became more intriguing, maintaining secrecy about his existence became increasingly difficult. Despite the government's best efforts, rumors of an alien child at a secretive facility began to circulate among conspiracy theorists and eventually caught the attention of mainstream media. It wasn't long before news outlets were clamoring for more information, and the facility where Kale was housed found itself under intense public scrutiny. Dr. Lisa Hammond and her team were prepared for some level of public interest, but were overwhelmed by the magnitude of the attention. Every major news network wanted the first interview with Kale, and the story sparked heated debates across various platforms about the implications of extraterrestrial life and how humanity should respond. Amidst this whirlwind, a more sinister concern emerged. Xenoskeptics, a group known for their extreme views on extraterrestrial beings and their skepticism of any non-human entities, began to rally against Kale's presence on Earth. They propagated the idea that Kale's advanced abilities posed a threat to human sovereignty and safety. This group gained a considerable following, fueled by fear and misunderstanding, and soon their rhetoric escalated from online forums to public demonstrations. As tensions rose, the safety of Kale and the facility staff became a priority. Security measures were tightened, and Jim, who had become a steadfast advocate for Kale's well-being, was particularly concerned about the impact of this negative attention on Kale's mental health. Kale, for his part, could not fully understand the complexities of human fears, but sensed the growing unease around him. One evening, the inevitable happened. A group of xenoskeptics managed to infiltrate the facility under the guise of a television crew, granted access to document the ongoing scientific research. Their true intentions were far more nefarious. They planned to abduct Kale, believing that by removing him from what they perceived as government propaganda, they could expose what they thought to be the truth about alien threats. The breach was detected swiftly thanks to the facility's advanced security systems, and a lockdown was initiated. Dr. Hammond, with the help of her security team, managed to intercept the group before they could reach Kale. However, the incident left everyone shaken and forced the facility to reevaluate its security protocols and the decision to keep Kale's existence a secret. In the aftermath, the team worked to reinforce not only physical security, but also their legal standing. Dr. Hammond reached out to international bodies and diplomatic channels to establish a framework for Kale's rights as a sentient being from another world. This was groundbreaking territory, legally and ethically, requiring delicate negotiations and careful consideration of Kale's unique situation. Throughout this ordeal, Jim's relationship with Kale provided a comforting constant for the young alien. Jim spent hours with Kale, teaching him about Earth, its cultures, and the diversity of human behavior. This education helped Kale understand the complexities of his situation better and reinforced his trust in those caring for him. Despite the challenges, this period also sparked a global conversation about the potential for peaceful coexistence with extraterrestrial life. Kale became a symbol of hope for many, representing new possibilities for understanding and cooperation in the universe. Meanwhile, Dr. Hammond and her team remained vigilant, determined to protect Kale while fostering a positive environment for him to grow and learn, free from fear and prejudice. The attempted abduction of Kale by the xenoskeptics had left a palpable tension at the facility. 
Despite the swift response during the incident, it was a stark reminder of the vulnerabilities that came with harboring an extraterrestrial being on Earth. Dr. Lisa Hammond, feeling the weight of responsibility, ramped up security measures and initiated a series of protocols designed to prevent such an occurrence from happening again. However, the exposure from the attempted abduction only intensified public curiosity and further emboldened the xenoskeptics. The group's rhetoric turned increasingly hostile, culminating in a well-coordinated plan that exploited a rare moment of vulnerability during a scheduled transfer of Kale to a more secure facility. This time they succeeded in kidnapping Kale, using sophisticated jamming equipment to disrupt the facility's communications and surveillance systems temporarily. Upon discovering Kale's disappearance, Dr. Hammond and her team were devastated but quick to act. Jim, who had developed a deep father-like bond with Kale, insisted on being part of the rescue operation. Together with a select team of facility security personnel and a few trusted government agents, they embarked on a high-stakes mission to retrieve Kale before he could be harmed or his location completely vanished. Using the last known signals from the jamming equipment and collaborating with Federal Intelligence Services, the team traced the xenoskeptics to a remote compound in the mountains. The location was heavily fortified, suggesting that this group was more than just a band of conspiracy theorists. They had significant resources and were potentially backed by larger, undisclosed entities. The rescue team approached the compound under the cover of darkness, using night vision equipment and silent communication devices to avoid detection. Dr. Hammond coordinated the operation from a mobile command center, providing real-time updates and strategic guidance based on surveillance data. Jim, despite not being a trained operative, played a crucial role in the operation. His connection with Kale became invaluable when they needed to search the compound quietly without alarming the kidnappers. As they neared Kale's holding area, Jim was able to communicate with Kale telepathically, a skill they had honed during their time together. Kale, scared but unharmed, responded, guiding Jim and the team to his location. The rescue was tense and fraught with danger. Just as the team reached Kale, they were ambushed by several armed guards. A brief but intense confrontation ensued, during which the team managed to subdue the guards without serious injury. With Kale secured, they quickly retreated from the compound, covering their tracks and avoiding further confrontation with any remaining xenoseptics. Back at the facility, the reunion was emotional. Kale clung to Jim, visibly shaken but relieved. Dr. Hammond and her team were profoundly impacted by the ordeal, strengthening their resolve to protect Kale and ensure his safety. The incident prompted a re-evaluation of their approach to handling Kale's presence on Earth, focusing more on his personal well-being and less on the scientific curiosity he sparked. In the aftermath, security protocols were overhauled, and discussions about Kale's future intensified. The event had demonstrated not only the dangers he faced, but also the deep connections he had forged with those who cared for him. This ordeal catalyzed a shift in perspective at the facility, where Kale was no longer just a subject of study, but a young being with rights, emotions, and a need for protection and care. After the harrowing rescue, the atmosphere around the facility changed dramatically. The staff became more protective of Kale, and there was a collective shift toward considering his emotional and psychological welfare as much as his physical safety. Kale's ordeal with the xenoskeptics had left some emotional scars, and the facility brought in specialists to help him cope with the trauma. Jim's presence was a constant reassurance to Kale, grounding him with a sense of family and belonging. As Kale recovered, discussions about his long-term future began to take center stage. Dr. Lisa Hammond, who had been at the forefront of advocating for Kale's welfare, initiated these conversations, involving not just the scientific community, but also ethical boards, international policymakers, and importantly, Kale himself. Kale, now more articulate and understanding of human languages and emotions, expressed a desire to know more about his origins and, if possible, to reconnect with his home planet, Viridia. His growth in human society had been profound, but he still felt a pull towards the stars, an intrinsic longing for the world he saw in his fleeting memories. 
Jim supported Kale's desire, seeing it not only as a step towards fulfilling Kale's personal wishes, but also as a potential bridge for peace and understanding between Earth and Viridia. Dr. Hammond proposed a bold initiative, to use the technology Kale had brought with him, along with Earth's own advancements, to attempt to locate Viridia. This project, dubbed Operation Homeward, would be a significant undertaking, requiring international cooperation and the pooling of global scientific resources. The initiative received mixed reactions, while many in the scientific community were excited about the prospects of such interstellar communication and travel, others were wary of the implications. Debates and discussions ensued, addressing the technical challenges, the risks of contacting an alien civilization, and the ethical considerations of such an endeavor. Despite the challenges, the consensus gradually shifted towards support for the project, driven by a broader understanding of its potential benefits and the emotional appeal of reuniting an alien child with his home. Governments and private entities from around the world offered resources and funding, drawn by the project's potential to usher in a new era of technological advancement and interstellar diplomacy. The project team was assembled, consisting of top scientists, engineers, and strategists from various fields. Kale was involved in every step his unique insights into the technology and his psychic abilities proving invaluable. Under Dr. Hammond's leadership, the team worked tirelessly to decipher and adapt Viridian technology, integrating it with human advancements to create a prototype communication device capable of reaching across the stars. Months of rigorous testing and development culminated in a significant breakthrough. The device, powered by a combination of human and Viridian technology, successfully sent a message deep into space, directed towards where Kale's memories suggested Viridia would be. The world held its breath as they awaited a response, hopeful for a sign that would not only confirm Viridian existence, but also potentially change the course of human history. Amidst this scientific milestone, Kale prepared himself for any outcome. Supported by Jim, Dr. Hammond, and the entire team, he remained hopeful yet realistic about the possibilities. Whether or not his people could be reached, Kale knew he had found a second family on Earth, one that had gone to incredible lengths to help him reach out to his first. The anticipation was palpable, as the world waited for a response to the message sent towards Viridia. Days turned into weeks with no sign, and the global excitement began to wane, except within the walls of the facility where hope remained steadfast. Kale, especially, spent many nights gazing up at the stars wondering if his family out there was doing the same, looking towards Earth. Then, just as the project team was beginning to consider the possibility that the message had gone unanswered, a faint signal was detected by the newly established Deep Space Monitoring Array. The signal was weak, but unmistakably artificial, carrying with it patterns that Kale recognized as similar to those in his own memories. The joy and relief were overwhelming. Kale's home planet Viridia had received their message and responded. With confirmation of intelligent life and the ability to communicate with Viridia, the project entered a new phase. Diplomatic protocols were quickly established, with the United Nations forming a special committee to handle extraterrestrial communications. Kale became a central figure in these developments, serving as an ambassador of sorts, bridging the gap between human and Viridian cultures. The communications with Viridia revealed a civilization eager to reconnect with Kale, whom they had mourned as lost. They explained that Kale's pod had been part of a scientific exploration mission that went awry, and his accidental journey to Earth was an unintended consequence of their technology. The Viridians were advanced, peaceful, and shared many of the human aspirations for knowledge and exploration. With the groundwork laid for interstellar relations, the final step was the most ambitious yet, establishing physical contact. Engineers and scientists from Earth and Viridia collaborated to design a spacecraft capable of making the journey between the two planets. The vessel, named the Viridian Hope, was a marvel of technology, embodying the combined advancements and aspirations of both worlds. As the launch day approached, emotions ran high. Kale was to return to Viridia, accompanied by a select crew including Dr. Lisa Hammond, who had become his guardian and mentor, 
and Jim, his steadfast earthly companion. The crew was trained not only in the technical aspects of the mission, but also in cultural exchange and diplomatic relations, preparing them for their roles as Earth's ambassadors. The day of the departure was a global event, watched by billions around the world. People from all nations celebrated the achievement and the promise it held for future cooperation in space exploration. As Viridian Hope lifted off, cheers and applause echoed around the globe. The journey to Viridia was long, but the spacecraft was equipped with the best technology to ensure safety and comfort for its crew. Kale spent the time teaching his human friends about Viridian culture, language, and what to expect upon arrival. The excitement of seeing his home planet was mixed with the sadness of leaving another behind, but the presence of his friends made the transition easier. When Viridian Hope finally entered Viridian airspace, the sight of the lush, glowing forests and vast oceans filled the crew with awe. Kale stood at the forefront, eyes wide with tears and joy, as he first glimpsed the world he had left as a child. The Viridians welcomed them with open arms and a grand celebration that marked a new chapter in universal harmony. Back on Earth, the mission was hailed as a turning point in human history, the moment when Earth truly became part of a larger cosmic community. For Kale, the journey was more personal, a return to his roots and a reunion with his original family, whom he introduced to his human family. Together, they looked forward to a future where Earth and Viridia would not just share technology and space, but also friendship and a united vision for the cosmos.